Ms. Bradley is the co-founder and board member of the Village of Promise, the organization that this year the YLC has teamed up with. The mission of the Village of Promise is to break the cycle of generational poverty one neighbor at a time through empowerment and education. And so without further ado, it is my privilege to introduce this year's speaker, Ms. Bradley. I am so excited to be here this morning and to share a little bit of my thoughts with you, uh, not only about uh, Martin Luther King and my reflection on him as I prepared for today, but also a little bit about me uh, and most importantly about Village of Promise. I am excited uh, and also humbled that Randolph has committed and has become engaged with the Village of Promise. We are really, really blessed by your participation reflection. There were three attributes that came to mind as I look back on Dr. Martin Luther King's life. And of course, I will tell you that, and it'll tell my age, <laughs> but I grew up when Dr. King was actually active. Um, I was in high school during the 60s, early 60s. So I was able to not only witness some of the things that he did, but I was also the beneficiary of some of the things that he did, a lot of what he did. But there are three attributes of this man that I'd like to share with you, and I'm gonna focus my brief remarks on those three attributes. The first is dream. The second is act. And the third is never quit. And of course, Dr. King's uh, dream was very lofty and very big, as you all well know. Um, his, I guess I could summarize his dream by saying that he believed that someday all men could be and live as brothers. He fought for freedom, he fought for the security of justice, and he fought for open door opportunities for everyone. And of course, as I said before, I was the beneficiary of that dream. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about me. I grew up during the 60s, as I said. I went to a segregated um, school, high school, here in Huntsville uh, for one year. And then about the time that Dr. King was very active, <clears throat> the Huntsville community decided that they would launch integration in a very nonviolent, which was part of Dr. King's strategy, in a very nonviolent way. So I was one of the first students to integrate Butler High School, and this was in 1964. And of course, that was a very interesting and challenging experience. In fact, I was talking to several of the seniors um, before you all came in, and we were talking about change. And so that was a big change in my life, and you all will go through many changes as I have done during your, during your life. But this was one major change, and so I was in that first group that went to Butler, and I knew, and, and I think uh, Mr. West has taken some of you through understanding what your talents and your gifts are, but I knew that I was not an athlete, I was not gifted um, in the arts, but I was gifted with a mind. And I knew that the academic success for me was going to be my way out. And of course my parents had already encouraged me in that direction anyway. So when I entered Butler High School in 1964, my dream, first dream, was to be the first African American to enter the Honor Society at Butler. Now, you have to remember that this was a very um, challenging uh, dream because very few people spoke to us. But I knew that, I, that that was my dream and that was my motivation for succeeding academically. And of course, I will share with you that I was the first African American to enter the Honor Society at Butler High and it made a difference for those people that followed me. So I'll tell you one little uh, statement, make one little statement now that one person can make a difference in many lives. You, as one person, can make a difference. And of course, when I got ready to graduate, <clears throat> I started, as some of you are doing now, looking uh, at colleges. And, and of course, um, still being in this era of segregation to some degree, because it wasn't widespread at this time, I said I was going to, and I applied to several of the HBCUs. Some of you may have heard of Tuskegee University in Tuskegee, Alabama, um, Spelman in Atlanta, T Tennessee State in uh, Nashville. But there was one woman, our guidance counselor, who I always say stepped out of her lane 
And she, because no, as I said earlier, nobody was speaking to us, but she stepped out of her lane and she said, she recognized my gift. And she said, Bobby, why don't you apply to one of the Ivy Leagues? And so I did, I, I made application and, I, and you know the story. Uh, I was accepted at Vanderbilt, got an academic scholarship, and the rest is somewhat history. But I, I want to make a point of how important it is to have a dream. The dream for Dr. King motivated him to do what he did, to do, to act. The dream for me, that early dream, motivated me to act. So the dream is crucial in your life. And I would just challenge all of you to come up with what is that one thing or two things? What is your dream in life? What is it that you want to accomplish? And keep that in front of you at all times. So, uh, we have a dream with Village of Promise. I know how important the dream is. And our dream at Village of Promise is that every child who gets into our pipeline of services will, not may, will graduate from college. Because we know, I know, just as Dr. King knew, that education is the key to your future success. Education is the key to what you will do in life, both for yourself personally and for others. So that's our dream with the Village of Promise. That's what we're all about. Uh, but it, it doesn't stop with the dream. The next attribute that became very evident, as all of you know who studied Dr. King, was that he acted. He acted in the face of adversity. He acted in the face of conflict. He acted in the face of uh, going to jail. He acted in the face of all sorts of evil that beset him. But he did some things that created and made the way and made, a ch made the opportunity for change for many people, including me, for generations, actually. Some of the things that he did, of course, as you all know, when he had, while he was acting in those situations was um, um, ensure that the Civil Rights Act of 1964 was passed. Voting Rights Act in 1965, and many other things I could go on and on. But of course, that that legacy of action is where is what has caused some of us to be where we are today. And of course, my action continued after college. Um, I um, entered um, the workforce and worked for several uh, contracting companies here locally for several years. But again, my dream, new dream was to build a business, build a business that could help other people achieve their dreams and goals. And also could ultimately provide financial freedom for me and freedom of time so that I could do the things that I felt like I wanted to do with no constraints of time or money. And so in 1989, we formed the company Computer Systems Technology. The, the dream causes you to act and the act causes lives to change. Of course, in Village of Promise, uh, it was, it was, it's always interesting how God provides a, another path for you once you finish one thing. And about the end of my career with computer systems, computer systems technology, I became aware of a ministry that was ongoing here in Huntsville, and it's called Lincoln Village Ministry. One of our uh, managers knew the man that was that was uh, leading this ministry, Mark Stearns, and invited him to a meeting. And he came, Mark came and shared his story with us about what he was doing in Lincoln Village. And that meeting changed the course of my life from that point to now. Uh, in that meeting, he shared with me that a lot of our uh, community is in poverty. Now, I knew that, but I did not know just how widespread it was until he shared what they were doing in Lincoln Village. He entered, he um, invited me to visit a single mom one day who lives in, the in that neighborhood. And when I went into that, into her apartment, and I think I may have, when I spoke to you all uh, one time before, I may have shared this with you. When I entered that apartment that day, that hot summer day, they had no electricity and no running water. And she had three children. And everything that they owned was in the middle of the floor in the front room. When I left that day, I said, I can never go back to where I used to be. 
In fact, I have a quote of Dr. King. He said once, our lives begin to end the day we become silent about the things that matter. Our lives begin to end the day we become silent about the things that matter. So I knew that after that encounter, I could not be silent. And that started my journey uh, with the Village of Promise. We, um, I got involved with Lincoln Village and started to do ministry with them. But about the same time, I became aware of an individual in Harlem, New York called Jeffrey Canada, who had started an organization called the Harlem Children's Zone. And basically, he had done very successfully what was being started in Lincoln Village. And that is, he recognized the importance of um, providing a, a pipeline of services around children in poverty to ensure that they could succeed academically. Because what we found is that children are smart. All of the children that we're working with right now are smart kids. But they have other needs that are not being met. And in some cases, in, in fact in, in a lot of the cases, when those other needs aren't being met, then, then their academic performance suffers. So our vision, our dream in the Village of Promise is to put these children in our pipeline of services, similar to what has been done in Harlem, put these children in our pipeline of services from cradle to college so that no need goes unmet and we can ensure that they will be successful academically. Now, if you think about it, and I asked this question once before, think of how your education would be impacted if you went home and there was no food. Or you could not, you did not have a ride to school. Or if you didn't have a place to sleep when you went home. If you did not know where you were going to sleep when you went home from school. These are the issues that some of our children face in not only the Village of Promise, that area that we've carved out to work, but in other communities in Huntsville, like Lincoln Village. So we are acting, and we are acting in partnership with organizations like Randolph as our educational partner, and organizations like Hills Clinic, who helps us provide the health care that our students need, or um, organizations like Country Next Church, who provides food. Uh, food is another issue. <coughs> provides food for our children and individuals and corporations throughout the community who are cons constantly providing us with financial and human resources to help us accomplish our mission. So that second attribute of Dr. King is act, acting. You can have your dream, you can have your desire, but until you put it into action, nothing will happen. And you have to act regardless of the circumstances, regardless of the obstacles, regardless of uh, the times that you're tired, regardless of what the sacrifice might, might be, you have to act. And then lastly, and probably most important, is never give up. You can never, ever give up. And I think that's, that was um, extremely displayed with Dr. King, who worked in this, in this area of um, overcoming segregation and inequities from the 1950s until the time that he died in uh, 1968. Winston Churchill was once asked to make a, make a uh, commencement speech at a college. And so when they invited him, he was sitting on the podium, and when it came time for him to come up and speak, he got up, went to the podium, and he didn't say anything at first, he just stood there. And then he opened his mouth. Of course, you know, one of the best ways to get people's attention is to stand up to speak and not say anything. <laughs> well, he stood up to speak, and he said, never give up. And so I say that to you as some of you embark on a, on a new um, journey as you leave Randolph. Some of you will be embarking on a new journey, engaging with the Village of Promise and the work we have to do. I will tell you that we can never give up doesn't matter what you're doing or what you're uh, attempting to do or um, what challenges you face, you can never give up. And we will be doing